Welcome back, Zero K fans. To Nana Liz at Dawn, I remain Chad of Fury three three three, your host, and we have another match between Lori and Snugglebase. This time on Vitra. Gonna be a bit more typical than the last game. Shields versus Cloaky. Shield bot from Snugglebase. Cloaky bot from Lori. And that that last game, I don't know. That I said before, like spiders versus jump bot. Spiders kind of have the advantage, but if spiders mono spam, it doesn't work out. Cloaky versus Shield, however, is fairly even. It's going to come down to what the players choose to do. I mean, basically it comes down to scouting and responses. That's It's a fairly even matchup. And it looks like Snuggle Base is... Why is Snuggle Base going for these one-shot... Like, infinite build, but they have all these one-shot constructions. Like, why do you have infinite build on if you're just bypassing it all the time? It's really weird. I don't understand what Snuggle Base is trying to do. They were doing that in the last game, too, and that was probably one of the big reasons they were mono-spamming, is they kept just rebuilding the same unit over and over again. But with this emergency build function, and they also meant they were accessing. I don't know what they're planning on doing. They know what Lori's up to, they know where Lori is. Lori doesn't actually know where they are, they haven't scouted them out. They have, Lori hasn't scouted Snuggle Base out yet. So Snuggle Base is going to be a little bit safer, but... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess this early in the game it kind of makes sense because they want to build. Snuggle Base wants to build up their economy. I guess that does make sense, but it is really risky. Just because building up one's economy while not building up units to defend that economy is not going to go over too well once your economy gets dealt with. Like you're going to get hit, and when you get hit, you have to defend. And whatever units you have, that's what you have. So you better have enough. But, this is the moment of truth. Actually, not quite. Lodi hasn't gone to attack yet. Snuggle Base is still a bit safe. And Snuggle Base, they have their economy. They don't have much... Okay, they have some defenses. They have Lotus coming in here. The Defender over to the northeast side of the map. The Snuggle Base... No, sorry. Snuggle Base has it in the northeast side of the base. And the Shieldbot Factory, once again, not producing anything. And this point... This is where I disagree. Like, I can see if you have less than 10 metal per second. But once you have more than 10 metal per second, build constantly. What is Snuggle Base doing? I seriously don't understand. What, this They've got to be testing something. It's got to be an experiment of some kind, because I seriously doubt Snuggle Base is actually playing like this intentionally. Or at least, is playing like this, because this, this is how they normally... I don't think Snuggle Base normally plays this way. I'd be very surprised if Snuggle Base normally plays where they're building like one unit at a time out of their factory as if it was StarCraft. It just does not make any sense. I don't understand what they're planning on doing. Especially since they get this downtimes like this, and then now the factory's not producing, or barely producing, or it's not producing in time. Just, okay, there we go. Now they're finally making use of the infinite build function. You have plus, you had plus 20 metal. Really not a big deal. But at this point, economy's fairly even. Both players are relatively stable in their positions. And these glaives might be walking to a trap. They might be walking to the outlaw, no, they're going to retreat before it even comes up. The bandit's already pushing them away, so Lori not able to do much damage. Which for the Cloaky player is a little bit annoying, but Snuggle Base is a little, it's further behind regardless. So at this point, Lori will probably switch to Rocco's, and yeah, they do. They actually just started to do that right as I said so. Switching to Rocco's to deal with the Outlaw, switching... I'm gonna, well, they should try to keep the Glaives as much as possible, but I guess they need to defend. They really need to defend. These, these bandits are coming in pretty hard. Snuggle Base, they want to get rid of Lodi's Commander. And for good reason. I mean, Lodi's Commander was one of the big reasons that Snuggle Base had a hard time dealing with anything last game once they had to, once Snuggle Base had to switch units. But Lodi's Commander will probably not go down. Oh man, this is going to be close. Actually, it will, it will go down. Just barely goes down, taking the outlaw out with it. But Snuggle Base takes out Lodi's Commander. Lodi now slightly behind an economy as a result of that. But more importantly, behind in position. What Lodi was able to do in the previous game was set that commander up, put it on the cliff, and then just keep setting up the cliff defenses. This map is much, much harder to do that with because the map is lower in the center. But the commander is still very useful for pushing things forward. Now there's just conjurers, and they need to run away whenever anything comes in. And Lodi, while they are quite aware of what's happening on the map, they're still going to have to do that, and they didn't. This conjurer is dead. Their forward presence is weakened, but... Nice tick, regardless. That was a very nice tick, actually. All but one bandit got taken out. 
And that one band is probably still going to die, so that was... Oh. Yep, still dies. That entire set of bandits, the entire squad of bandits taken out by a tick. Very nicely done by Lori. But yeah, their commander, losing their commander means they lose a lot of forward presence. That was just how Lori was playing. Using their commander rather than building, and now they have to build defenses. Now it's just, it's slower. So that's what Snuggle Base has really purchased. They purchased space. They purchased more room to breathe. How they take advantage of that is, remains to be seen. Because at this point, the economy is relatively close to even. And then, once Lori starts reclaiming the commander, that's what I mean. Once they start reclaiming the commander, it's going to be pretty close to even. The only difference is that it's harder to establish a position. Although, on the other hand, once Lori does establish a position, it's harder to dislodge, because it's with static defenses, rather than with a mobile commander, which is going to be only establishing position where it currently is, rather than in a particular spot and then keeping it there. Because these lotuses will not go away until they're destroyed. So there is that. But now Snuggle Base... Well... They're still in a good position. They're still in a strong position. They have... They have a lot of the map. They have a strong overdrive. They have... As much economy as loaded as if Lodi's reclaiming with one worker. Actually, reclaiming with two workers from the looks of it. Wow, that's... Yeah, that is a strong economy, alright. Snuggle Base is being very aggressive. Lori going to be going for a counterattack, which should get rid of this set of bandits if Snuggle Base isn't careful. And Snuggle Base has nothing to retreat to, so these bandits are basically dead. How many glaives are left? Half a dozen glaives are left. Snuggle Base... Oh, they gotta worry about this. Lori's not quite counterattacking yet, but Lori will be setting that up, so... Ah, another gunship plant. Possibly more rapiers. Possibly a crow, I kind of doubt it, but definitely more rapiers. Now, of course, Shieldbot doesn't ha they have Vandals, which are pretty good. They're very good at tanking, but they aren't necessarily the best when you have to deal with units and you have to suddenly build up anti-air. That's tough to deal with. The Snuggle Base right now, taking that counterattack on the chin. They have some good defenses, though it's not going to be too bad, but still, the Snuggle Base is taking that counterattack, being hit by it on all, f on all fronts. And their commander, there, I think they're trying to set up their commander to attack, like kind of going for sideways attack, deal with deal quite a bit of damage, but Lodi's already switched over into gunships, going to Banshees. Going to be going pretty hard into Banshees, actually. Which means they're probably going to be going around the back, trying to deal with all this economy, tear about all the static stuff, because that's what Banshees do best. Initial attack, Glaive tries to set up, get rid of the commander, which will apparently not be successful. Lodi retreating. They were in a bad position, but retreating back... Okay, they're going to counterattack to get rid of the commander now. Now that the bandits are dead, the glaive is going to try to get rid of the commander. They will not succeed. Uh, assuming Snuggle Base jumps. Nope, Snuggle Base doesn't have to jump. But yeah, they will not succeed. They will force Snuggle Base to be less aggressive, but the commander is still going to survive for now. Getting a commander up to rebuild themselves. Eventually... I think the commander might be out of range to actually heal by the time it's done in the pit. Okay, digging a giant hole in the ground and then putting a putting a caretaker in there. Which is apparently is that out of their build range? I think they screwed up. Put the caretaker a little bit too far into the ground. But anyway. Counterattack from Snuggle Base, which should be able to tear apart the eastern side. Actually, if they're careful. They can tear apart the entire eastern side, go up here, go to the west, from the northeast. But it looks like they're not going to do that. They're going to be more defensive. Are they aware of the Banshees? They are aware of something. They're aware of some fast-moving units coming in. Not sure if they're aware of their Banshees, but, well, they are now. Bandit's going to do what they can, which is actually quite a lot. Bandits are going to be very effective here. Yeah, the Vandals aren't actually necessary with this many Bandits. The downside, of course, being that Banshees are really fast. But then again, so are Swifts, and the Vulture in place. Swifts can come in soon after and deal with these Banshees. Which they'll kind of need to, actually. What else is coming in? Nope, more Banshees, nothing else. And Hawks coming in, not, sorry, not Swifts, Hawks. I mean, Swifts would be okay, but Hawks are probably better because it is gunships. However, these Banshees, there are so many being built that they're being built at replacement rate. Like, Lori's pouring all of their money into the gunship plant. They're taking five seconds to build. Yeah, they're... 
They're not dying that quickly. The commander is... Where's the commander? Ah, Snuggleway is retreating with her commander. Wisely retreating, getting right out of there. There's a jump-assisted retreat, too. The jump's on re on its own reload, but... that That's a desperate dis escape, because they really have to do that. And the Hawks... Finally reasserting something. And now at this point, Snugglebase, well aware of what Lori has. Like, able to see everything Lori has, or at least get radar coverage of everything Lori has. So now, now they're in a good position. Now Snugglebase has a much stronger position to work from. Lori is going to deal with the fact that Snugglebase knows more or less what's happening. And has strong anti-air, strong air presence. And the response is the Trident, which is the pretty typical response. Pure Trident. And switching over to Zeus Warrior from the ground. Which may... I think it's too little too late, actually. There's one Zeus out and one Warrior, which actually... Okay, that's that's good. But if they were just building them now, that's that would have been insufficient. So Snuggle Base's response is to continue to spam bandits. I'm a little bit surprised. I would have expected a Racketeer or two once they saw the Zeus. Like, Racketeers against Zeus Warrior would do beautifully. But apparently not. Apparently that's not going to be the option. Instead, it's going to be a Wyvern. Really? I mean, I guess that would smash the group up, which is good. But that wouldn't kill the Zeus, and there's more Zeus coming. Oh, never mind. No, the Sharpshooter coming now. On hold, but still, Sharpshooter is eventually coming. What is Snuggle Base? Oh, I see. Snuggle Base is probably building elsewhere. Actually, wait. What is happening? There's something else on production, but not what it looks like. Oh, I see. This Stinger is what's production. Oh, even then, that's not that much. At any rate, Stinger is up, but these... These Banshees have no real way to attack anymore. They can attack along the eastern side. The eastern side is very open, very vulnerable. Snuggle Base is going to have to fortify that, and they are working on this. Or they're working on expanding to it, but they're not working necessarily on fortifying it. And a Sharpshooter coming up, I don't agree with this. I think Lori is... They're making a read on a Felon Ball. Because they haven't seen anything yet. I mean, it's the Wyverns being built, but they haven't seen much yet. Snuggle Base isn't being that aggressive. They're being quite defensive. That's Felon Ball play. I'm not sure if Snuggle Base is trying to feint with the Felon Ball. Like, they're holding back and then making it look like they're going for a Felon Ball. But if they were, Lori's taking the bait. They're building structures. They're building anti-Felon Ball units. When all it is is Bandit Ball with a Wyvern coming in as backup. And that... That's going to be a real problem for the Sharpshooter. And for the Banshees. And, actually, the Banshees not so much. But the Sharpshooter definitely... And now, now it's been revealed, now Lori knows, okay, it's not, if they were paying attention, they know it's not going to be a, fel a felon ball. It is going to be a bunch of bandits, and it's going to be the Wyvern. But otherwise, I don't know, that might not be worth it. I think, I think that just worked. I think basically at this point, Lodi just countered the wrong thing. They went for a hard read. They didn't really scout out. They went for a hard read on what they'd assume that Shield Ball would do. Because Shield Ball, or sorry, Shield Factory normally goes for the Felon Ball. That's the typical play. That's normally what they do. So it makes sense. And at this point, it's not quite over. Snuggle Base hasn't won yet. But they, but Snuggle Base is in a strong position with the Wyvern out. I mean, the Wyvern's still alive. Just repairing and... Yeah, repairing, rearming, that's fine. The Wyvern, the Wyvern is still very much alive. And now we're seeing well, convicts. I mean, a felon ball might come up, but the, star the sharpshooter is still in place. The counter still exists, but not for the bandits. And Lori throws in the towel. I guess realizing they did not build for the right thing. I think they could have come back. I don't think it was completely hopeless. But yeah, that snuggle base was essentially putting themselves in a position where Lori decided to go for a hard read and didn't do it right, rather than scouting it out. They didn't actually scout out, oh, hey, there's a Wyvern coming in. They just assumed there'd be a Felon Ball. And they were wrong to assume. So yeah, that was game two, or the second game they played. So the third game, last game they played, is on Dune Patrol. Which 
slightly awkward, very hovercraft focused map. Probably a hover amp will be what we see. Maybe hover light vehicle. Anyway, that'll be up in just a moment, so stay tuned. <laughs> 